We're snacking, shopping, and riding around Universal. But there's a winner this time. Hey there, MAMFAM. We are at Universal Orlando's Islands of Adventure, bringing you a new randomizer game. This is the game where we play through three rounds, and what we're searching for is chosen at random. Alan won the last one at Disney Springs, but I'm hoping I will redeem myself here at Islands of Adventure. Dinosaurs, Harry Potter, Marvel, this is my time to shine. Here's how the game works. We are gonna be battling our way through three rounds. The eating drinking round, the shopping round, and the ride round. At the beginning of each person's turn, we will be using a randomizer to select three adjectives, and that's what they are searching for. If you can find something that meets all three of those requirements, that means you get three points for that round. If you can only find something that has two, you get two points, etc. But you have to be smart about where you're going because you can only make two stops per round. So you're gonna wander this entire park looking in every merchandise shop to find a three point item. So at some point you may have to decide, take a lesser amount of points or risk getting none at all. All right, round one, snacks, which can be drinks. It's combined here, so we added the ride category. I'm first? You're first. All right, what am I trying to eat or drink? All right, you are trying to eat or drink. Tell us, randomizer. That's like a Wheel of Fortune. You are getting something that is fruity. I'm not like excited about fruity. Exclusive. Pink. Fruity, exclusive, and pink. This one's tough. I have an idea. My first thought was actually to go to the bakery cases up at the front of the park, but I don't know what they'll have that's fruity and pink. What do you mean by exclusive? I think exclusive is something that is something that can only be found in the area or is made exclusively for an area of the park. So like something I couldn't find in Seuss Landing, but I could find it exclusively in Wizarding World. Yes. All right, I have a feeling that in Honeydukes, the candy shop in Hogsmeade, Wizarding World of Harry Potter, I feel like I can get something. They have the bulk candy wall with all the different gummies and treats that you can fill a bag with. They have Birdie Bot's Every Flavored Beans, which are the magical jelly beans. They gotta have some pink ones of those. So I, I feel good about going into Honeydukes. Made it into the wizarding world of Harry Potter Hogsmeade. Hello, sir. Hello, how are you? Good, how are you? Very well, thank you. Welcome to Hogsmeade. Thank you. And we are headed into Honeydukes. Now, this is the original wizarding world of Harry Potter. This is where you've got Harry Potter and the Forbidden Journey, which is inside Hogwarts Castle. You've got my favorite ride on the entire planet, Hagrid's Magical Creatures Motorbike Adventure TM. You've got the three broomsticks. But we are headed into one of the best shops, Honeydukes. This is the candy store that all the kids like to blow all their money on when they get to visit this all wizarding village. And I'm very hopeful that there are some pink candies on this wall. Oh. Well, I don't know if I even need to go to the wall. I just have one question. Is a coconut a fruit? Is a coconut a fruit? I don't know. Coconut. A fruit. It is a fruit. It's technically a special type of fruit called a droop. Yeah. I've never had pink coconut ice, and I do think this is one of the treats that is not only exclusive to Harry Potter, but is actually exclusive to Universal. Some of the treats you can sometimes find other places, like they do sell Birdie Bots Every Flavored Beans in other packaging um, at some places, but I think, that, I think that's a good call. I think I'm buying this coconut ice. And in fact, I feel like the coconut ice is more exclusive than some of the other things in the bulk candy. Because while some of them are named like lemon sherbets and fizzing Wizzlies, a lot of them are like gummy worms, which while delicious, definitely not Wizarding World exclusives. Wait, I just had another idea. This is the bakery case where you can get flavored apples, fudge, ginger newts, that's my favorite treat in here. I like the pumpkin cake as well. Technically this apple would count too, I think. I'm swapping for the apple. Undeniably pink, 
undeniably a fruit and exclusive to the uh, bakery cases in Wizarding World. That's three points. That's three points, baby. I do I do want to try the coconut ice at some point, but I love a caramel apple, so I'm excited that this works. This is also healthy, kids, because there's fruit in there. You know, sure. You know, you got you got a little little schmutz. Turkey. Uh, that worked. The white chocolate coating is a little on the sweeter side, obviously, but it's balanced nicely by the tart apple. I love the sticky caramel. Wait, is it a full fizzing wispy? Well, that's a fizzing wispy. That's cool. It's like two treats in one. Fizzing wispies are chocolate with crackling candy, like Pop Rocks inside of them. You can buy a box of them. And then you've also got some of the sour rope here. I think this is a really fun treat. Definitely shareable. It comes with a resealable bag. No complaints here. Starting off strong, I think. Okay, well, now I'm hungry. No, I'll get, I'll get something else. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm good. I'm good. I appreciate the offer, though. It's very kind of you. All right, three points for me on the board. Are you ready for your snack and or drink assignment? I certainly hope so. All right, hit the randomizer. Your first adjective, cold. Thank goodness, it is hot outside. Cold. Second. <clears throat> Crunchy. Okay, third. <laughs> you done? Yeah, no. Oh, inexpensive. Cold? Yeah. Crunchy? Yeah. Inexpensive. That's it. Okay. Gonna think about it. All right, so I think I've got a good place to start. At least for the cold and inexpensive bit. Now, really quick point of clarification there. What do you qualify as inexpensive? $10. $10 or yeah. less. Yeah. All right. That feels good for theme parks, food, and drink. It does. And it further solidifies my idea. So I know we've got cold and inexpensive on lock. We're going to head to Hop on Pop Ice Cream Shop in Seuss Landing. Wow, what a mouthful that is. Just to see what they've got in terms of ice cream flavors and if they might have a crunchy addition to their menu. Seuss Landing is the delightfully off-kilter land dedicated to Dr. Seuss's tales. One thing that I love about this area is that you will never see anything with a straight line, including all the trees. And I know that you've heard Molly share that story before, but these rescued and rehomed palm trees all operating at fun little kooky angles really add to the overall aesthetic of the space. So it looks like we are in luck. There is Sunday on a stick that is coated in nuts. All of these are under the $10 limit. We're getting a Sunday on a stick. Talk about a breakfast of champions. All right, undeniably cold, crunchy, and inexpensive. I've never had one of these, so I'm really excited to try it. I am immediately transported back to childhood. Public school cafeterias, one day a week, it was Friday for us. They would bring us ice cream containers and big freezers, and we'd be able to pay extra, and I always loved getting these types of bars. Now, certainly not this big, it was high quality, but these types of Sunday bars, chocolate coated with peanuts, and I'm immediately transported back. Do they call firecracker bars? I don't know, but yeah. I just had a memory flash. Yeah, I just had a flashback. That's it's amazing. Just a really simple treat. I want that. You that, want to take a bite? Yeah. It well, after after you're done. Um I've always wanted to try one, but I'm always lured away by more exciting and unique things. But sometimes a good ice cream is all you need. Give me some snackles. Beep up, beep up, beep up. Flavor-wise, though, stand of vanilla ice cream, coated in chocolate and covered in a whole heck of a lot of peanuts. This is a classic pairing, and it's really hard to go wrong. I'm loving it. How is that ice cream not melting yet? So this is very much flash frozen and deep sealed into the last possible moment, and it's helped that it's covered in a very thick outer layer of chocolate and peanuts, so it's helping keep it all insulated. It's getting the chocolate first, but it is super cold. I'm, yeah, yeah, what a good place. All right, so that's three points for me for my Hop on Pop ice cream shop on Sunday on a stick. Mm -hmm. Very tasty. We're on to shopping. This is the round that tripped me up last game, so... You ready? Yeah. Spin on the wheel. Beep, 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 beep. First is yellow. 
Lello. Lello. The next. For the home. Yellow for the home. A yellow home good. For the children. Not the same. No. And lastly. This might actually work. Jurassic. Okay, so we obviously are going to Jurassic Park to find something yellow for the home. And dinosaur themed. Jurassic. Can I do it? You bet your ass I can. Let's go. Working our way into Jurassic Park. Now this is one of my favorite theme park lands as well because I love this IP. I love Velocicoaster, which we're coming upon right here. And I even love Jurassic Park River Adventure despite my large aversion to water attractions. The thing is, one, yellow's kind of throwing me because I don't know what they're gonna have that's yellow and dinosaur. But I'm thinking maybe a pillow or a plush or a mug. That would all count for the, for the home category. The other thing I'm struggling with is the fact that there's like quite a few Jurassic Park gift shops and we have a rule in place that you can only go to two stores and you can't backtrack. So I can't go into the first store, find something that would give me two points and then leave and if I don't find anything else, come back. So it's kind of a risky gamble. That said, I'm gonna start here at the bottom of the Dino Institute. Whee, look how much fun they're having. Uh, that's it, gonna start at the bottom of the Dino Institute here in the Velocicoaster gift shop to see what I can find. It's probably hard to hear on the mic, but there's so many dinosaur noises as you walk in here. It's really not super busy today. There's only a 35 minute wait at Velocicoaster. And uh, people often are like, when should I come to the parks when it's not busy? Now, <laughs> September once school goes back in is a good choice. <laughs> so here's the thing, friends. I do like to win with dignity, but I also like to win. Do you think Alan knows that technically this is the Velocicoaster store and the one upstairs is the Dino store? Or yes. do you think I can? Alan knows that. I've been foiled. So my first store will be this one, the Velocicoaster store. I'm just now realizing that the Jurassic Park logo has a lot of yellow on it. <laughs> so that could work in my favor, but I may have made a mistake as which store I'm starting in because I think one of the other Jurassic Park stores is gonna have more Jurassic Park specific stuff. Whereas I think this store typically has more Velocicoaster specific stuff, but we're gonna try. I don't think that's enough yellow, but I do like the idea of a to-go coffee mug. Working our way back in. Yeah, I'm seeing a lot of Velocicoast. Oh my gosh. This has, this is amazing. <laughs> That's just, wow. Is that yellow enough? No. Ducks are yellow. I think the rule we decided on last time, and you know what, correct me if I'm wrong, but it had to be greater than 50% yeah. is the color selected. That's true. That does not count, even though that is fantastic. I have the Dr. Alan Grant one of that. So maybe if I found Ellie Sadler, another one of the humans, they would have less, less costume, more duck. All right, once again, not the majority of the mug. Now here we have a real fine piece of merchandise. They have dinosaurs dressed like the characters. So like there's a Triceratops uh, as Dr. Ellie Sadler. Uh, no. There is a, a Brontosaurus as John Hammond. We even have a clever girl here as a, no, that's a T-Rex as Dr. Ian Malcolm. And they do have a raptor as um, Alan Grant, but they seem to be sold out of that one. Um, I wish this had enough yellow because that is a fantastic item. All right, uh, we failed in the Velocicoaster store. They had a few things with yellow on them, but none of it, majority yellow. Lots of cool Jurassic goodies, but nothing that meets all three of my qualifications. I did see things that would give me two points, but nothing for three. And whilst I could go in the dino store, which is upstairs here, I can only go one more place. And we're playing the odds here, friends. The store at the exit of Jurassic Park River Adventure is the largest of the Jurassic Park stores. So, we gotta go with our odds there. Okay, here we've made it to Jurassic Outfitters. This is the largest shop. This is the one at the exit of Jurassic Park River Adventure. And I am just hoping we have got a mug or a keychain or a pillow or something 
yellow. All right, we've got our same dino DNA collection here. Oh, we have an expanded version though. We have a notebook. I feel like a notebook is for the home, right? It's got a pen. That could work, but I think this is the winner, friends. It's got the pen, notebook. I'm gonna use it in the home for taking to-do lists, notes for the podcast. I use notebooks all the time. There's also this. Beautiful signage. Multiple variations, all yellow. Definitely for the home. I do like this one because I believe that to be a reference to Jimmy Buffett's cameo in Jurassic World when the pterodactyls are attacking and he grabs his margarita and runs, pour one out. Um, how much is that sign? 40 doll hairs. Okay, we're gonna just know that the signs are here. We're gonna appreciate the Jimmy Buffett sign, but I'm still gonna buy this, which is $13 and something I'll actually use. I did not get stumped by shopping this time. I'm the proud owner of a beautiful notebook. Yeah, you are. Three and more points for you. Three more points for me, and now it's time for you to do some shopping. Right, let's roll that wheel. <laughs> Colorful. Great. Ironic. Roll it again. <laughs> Accessory. Dope. Roll it again. <laughs> Soft. A soft and colorful accessory. Yep. Well, I'm gonna have to trust you that I can consult you about what's colorful and what's not. But believe it or not, I think I have an idea. Okay. My approach for this round is simple. We are headed back to the front of the park because the merchandise locations there typically have the widest variety of merchandise found throughout the theme park here, just because they have to represent the majority of the IP that you could find without all the specialty shops throughout the land. Yeah, it's Quint. They added a Chrissy. <laughs> That's amazing. Wow, I want quit now. Well, as I was saying before we had a wonderful discovery, while those merchandise shops typically don't have the more exclusive items that are reserved to the shops in those specific lands, it will have things that represent them in those larger merch shops. So I can find an accessory that is colorful and also soft. Real quick question, when we say colorful, what do you mean? Three colors minimum. Okay. Black and white and grayscale, anything does not count. I'm gonna be leaning on you pretty heavily for this. We have arrived at Universal Studios Islands of Adventure Trading Company, which as I mentioned before, is the merchandise shop here at the front of Islands of Adventure that contains a wide variety of goods representing all the different areas around the park. What do you mean by accessory? What do you have in mind? Well, let, let's walk and talk. Okay, so after entering in the shop, immediately want to check out the Harry Potter section. Uh, we have some pins, a keychain, none of those are soft. A shirt is certainly not an accessory. It feels like more of a main component of an outfit. Hmm, pins. I imagine these qualify as an accessory that also well, maybe it's more of a trinket than an accessory, now that I say that out loud. You should get a pin. It's definitely three points. That's certainly something that I'm not going to do now. Wandering around the back portion of the apparel. What about a, how do we feel about a scarf? I think the scarf is an accessory. All right, well, you said it has to have two colors. These are three colors. This, I would imagine, only has two. Does it have three? Okay, well, that doesn't qualify as colorful. Noted. So we've got some scarves, ties, I don't think patches count as an accessory here, and then some lanyards, again, not an accessory, and socks, but I'm not seeing anything that has more than three colors, or two colors or more, I should say. Abandoning the Harry Potter search for just a moment, we're going to explore the rest of the location here. Wait, does it have to be an accessory for me? So we could get something maybe for Kronk or Ella? Do these puppy bandanas qualify? And are some of them more than three colors or more? That one's not. That one's just like pink. Well, I guess it's three shades of pink. Yes, I agree. Pink. Mm -hmm. These are definitely wood cap. So I, I could pink. get... Are, soft. are they? Yeah, that's soft. I mean, Kronk and Ella would look nice in some bandanas. Ella's not gonna wear that. 
Oh, we'll try. I think they look nice. They definitely count. I just don't know that Ella will enjoy it, but it's nice that you're going to try. Yeah, we can try. We'll see what you can do. Well, with that, headed to the checkout counter. And as you can see, it was a good choice to come here because look at the sheer variety of merchandise that you have in these types of shops. Everything okay? That face is a no. <laughs> I mean, if you want it, you should get it. <laughs> you do have a cool notebook. All right, it is tied six to six. Moving into the final round, this is a new category we made up for being inside a theme park compared to Disney Springs, and it's the ride category. But really, it's like an asterisk. It's more of like the do category. So it's like huh. you could ride a ride, you could meet a character, you could see a show, some, just yeah. some kind of activity within the theme park. And this category is particularly difficult because it's not like it's a merch store or a food and beverage location where the menus may change or the stock may change. There's only so many rides or experiences that we have inside of this theme park. So it's really up to the fates now. <sighs> Speaking of the fates, live rolled your numbers. <laughs> Thrilling. Okay. We're in Universal, that's not that hard. Loud. Okay. Are you loud? Is it loud? Who's that's, to say? That's what I'm wondering. And seated. Oh, okay. Yeah. Now I do thinks I've hit the jackpot as far as attractions go. Seated, loud, and thrilling. Three attractions immediately come to mind and those would be your three roller coasters in this park. Hagrid's Magical Creatures Motorbike Adventure TM, my favorite ride. Jurassic World Velocicoaster and the Incredible Hulk Coaster. And I was actually thinking of doing Jurassic World Velocicoaster because the line at Hagrid's is quite long per usual. But then I thought, while I do think Velocicoaster counts, there is no denying that if there's one coaster that's loud, it's this one. Incredible Hulk coaster not only has the loud sound effect of the Hulk as you get shot out of this cannon, but you can actually hear it right now. I don't know if the mic's picking it up. You can hear the custom written soundtrack blaring in your personalized speakers written and performed by Patrick Stump of Fall Out Boy. Bum, bum, bum. As far as favorites go, would be my third choice of the three listed. It's undeniably the loudest one. So that means we gotta do it. What I will say though, is just because I said it is my third favorite of those three, that's like a stacked deck. Like those are like the two best attractions in the park. And I do love Incredible Hulk Coaster. I think it is really fun. I love that initial shootout right here. It's got seven inversions. It's a really nice long coaster. This is a great ride. This is definitely a must do when you're here at Islands of Adventure. So I'm certainly not upset about riding it. And if you needed further proof that this is the time to visit, there's only a 15 minute queue. However, we can't take you with us because for safety reasons, everything must go in a locker. The only things you're allowed to bring with you are like a lanyard or your ticket that is what opens up your locker. So we'll see you on the other side. Just a great time on the Hulk. Another three points for me. The most fun three points I've gotten probably ever. Uh, Ever? Yeah, it's fair. I mean, it's a great coaster. Yeah. It's a lot of fun. The randomizer fates were on my side. What's it looking like for me? Let's spin it. Virtual. Good. Game. Virtual game, okay. Pre-2000 IP, intellectual property. Huh, wow, that randomizer is really coming for me on this one. Really randomizing. Yeah, all right, well, let's think on it. Well, folks, this might be where I crash and burn. There are no shooter style or game style attractions in Universal Islands of Adventure. There are some of those carnival games that exist throughout both the Jurassic Park section of this park, as well as where we are right now in the Marvel area. But I don't know if any of those are virtual. 
I know that both from Marvel and Jurassic Park, they're both pre-2000s IP, so I'm checking two of the boxes. At this point, it's going to be a gamble of what we can get. All right, well, we have a strip of the carnival games here. None of them seem to be virtual in any way, shape, or form. All very, very physical in nature. I suppose as a last ditch effort, I'm just gonna ask some of these team members if there are any virtual games. Because if I leave here, then it's just straight over to the Jurassic Park section where they have near exact replicas of these games. Well, the team member confirmed that the Jurassic Park games were not virtual either, and they don't have any of these style virtual competition games. Uh, so it looks like I'm taking the L on this one, folks. Although, as a consolation prize, I'm going to try to win either a Quint or Hooper doll from from one of these carnival games. I guess that's enough. I'm also gonna try and win the Quint or Hooper doll. <laughs> we'll take, you know what, I'll take Hooper. Yeah, yeah, he drives the boat, Chief. Opa drives the boat. Thank you. Look Thank at him. you. Look at him. Okay, so I was excited to win because obviously I won. I want to say that again, I won. You won that. Yeah, I won that prize. And I was told originally they didn't have a, a, a Quint plush, which was my main choice. So I was super happy with, with Hooper. And then as I was walking away, Luna, the wonderful team member, ran up and had a quint. She found the last quint, which is really nice. It's at this moment that I have to remind you that we walked past an arcade in Marvel. Yeah, that's fine. An arcade that would have had a virtual game. That's fine. I got a quint. Yeah, but... Yeah, quint's better. But the arcade. Yeah, but quint's know. better. Inarguably, quint is better. Look at him. Look at him! I... I would have rather lost the game and gotten the quit. Yep, yep, that's where so, I'm at. I agree, it's great. But I didn't. I won the, the actual game. So the most important thing, the most important winner is me. And that's what we have to remember right now. No, as, no, no, no. You got city hands. No, no. You got city hands, Mr. Hoopa. No, no, no. You're going to tear his head off. I don't want to. Don't Just do that. Like Bruce. No. Bruce bites him in half, actually, at the waist. If you like this video, please be sure to like and subscribe if you're new. Follow us on all of our socials, Chief. And then if you want to join the conversation, join us on Discord. <sighs> and until next time, friends. You lost the Quint, nope. I'm Molly. I'm Alan. And this is Quint. And it has been so magical, because I'm the winner. Okay. I am the winner today. Look at him! It's me who won. Uh-huh. In spirit. Look at him, he's uh, so cool. And uh, you know what? Go watch our Disney Springs version. Oh, yeah. And until next time, friends. All right, uh, friends. Thank you. This is the thing. We've already wrapped the video. Yeah. Alan won Quint. I did. We're yep. ready, but we need Hooper. Go! Come on, Doc Brown, go faster! Thank you. Rob. Now we have all of them. We got Brody in a different video, and now we have all of them. They got steady hands, Mr. Hooper.